Who would be your least favorite pick for the Dallas Cowboys at mm. number 26? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, let's get right into questions. First one from Chris. Who would be your least favorite pick for the Dallas Cowboys at number 26? Man, it's a it's a really good question, and especially considering you know all the conversation that we've had previously about how it feels like there's lots of soft landing spots at the Cowboys. What's going to happen for me to not love the pick at 26 is going to be them taking somebody that has fallen. I think that I didn't particularly like in the first place, and that they view as a value. Some unlike, I mean, the name that keeps popping in my head while I think about it is. Brian Breesy. Um, you know, like because that's it's actually like, one of the first names that popped up my head. However, I I don't think I hate him as much as you. I, well, go ahead. Well, listen, I mean, I think let's 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 kind of define the terms here. I, I don't necessarily hate him. It's just I think that there is high bust potential with that player. Uh, not that I don't think that he doesn't have the ability to come out and 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 do something. I, look, I would understand the value at the position. I, I mean, I would understand, you know, the the fit. Uh, I, there's lots about it that I would understand. My concern is that this is a player who was a very very highly recruited player coming out of high school. Uh, didn't quite live up to hype, and I think the reason that he would be he's being drafted as high as he's speaking about being drafted is because of you know sort of that same sort of evaluation process that you hear about NFL teams that go after first round bus right yeah, like sure. after their first contract where they're like someone thought that this guy was a player i bet i could make something out of him that's how i feel like their brian breesy's profile is Except, you know, instead of being a college prospect, it's, we're talking about a high school prospect. Yeah. And he definitely showed things in Clemson. I'm certainly not discounting that. Well, that and he's, but got, he's got rare athleticism. So that does absolutely. make me feel better. If he yeah. tested like as a 65th percentile athlete, I would be a little bit concerned. But I, I, he's, just matters, a tough guy to, he's a tough guy to project, right? Because yeah. is, he, is he Leonard Williams in the NFL? Yeah. Or is he just one of these... Taven Bryan types like I just he's hard to figure out he has a body type and the kind of you know the style of of player that you you know we we feel like we've all busted out on before so it's sure. it's it's easy to look at his lack of production his you know kind of on and off the field stuff with injuries um and 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 see a player and honestly I think Luke Van Ness is the, another player that <laughs> I feel this way yeah. about right yeah. where Everyone feels really highly about him. He doesn't quite have the production I would feel comfortable with uh, it, for one reason or another. I understand there's mitigating circumstances with both of those players. Uh, it's and it's and it's not that I would hate those players. It's that I just would feel less comfortable with those players as many many others that I think would be available. At very uneasy about both those guys. I, I actually watched Van Ness last night again, and he's so hard to figure out because Iowa didn't play him on rundowns. He never started a game for Iowa. I don't know if they just didn't trust him. So it's an Iowa thing. It's 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 an Iowa tradition thing. I mean, everyone you've talked to or you've heard from, it's it it's he, they had a senior that was ahead of him and that's just the kind of mentality they have on their football team. They start their seniors over the underclass. So, so which is fine. Yeah. Most of his best snaps come inside, but he has no pass rush moves yeah. at all yet other than a bull rush. And I think he played at like 268 pounds. Where does that guy play for you the first two years? Because to me, this feels very much like you're our next Tyrone Crawford and we just have no idea where to play you. But Tyrone Crawford could actually play multiple spots. Yeah. And again, like, I mean, not to kind of insert our own issues in here, but this is this is the kind of player that I struggle with naturally. You know, sure. these power defensive ends that are they tweener three techniques like 
these guys require a lot of evaluation to kind of figure out exactly their best usage. And and the problem specifically with him is that we just don't have a lot of that usage. Yeah. So it's not that I don't think that he's, you know, that that athleticism is worth a gamble. I, I feel like it probably is. It just makes me extremely uneasy because I don't have a ton of tape to kind of look and find individual traits to match with assignments that I'm going to give him yes. when he's on my team. I have an idea what I want to do. But it's it's far less from a certain thing as compared to you know Nolan Smith or some of these other defensive ends who it's a very clean profile. Okay, maybe he's a little bit undersized, but I've seen this guy rush the passer and play defensive end for a thousand snaps yep. last year or whatever. Yep. Uh, do you want to guess one of my guys? Hmm. Let's see, Bijan Robinson. Uh... No, to be honest, it's not. There okay. are some other guys that the Cowboys have been mentioned with that I would scare me more than Bijan. So oh, think about scary. how far I've come. Uh, the first that's one is Keely Ringo. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. It, and that's somebody who the Cowboys had a visit with. Um, I just – I think it's a combination of I didn't love his tape, and I also like a lot of the other day two corners. Yeah. Like, I'm just not sure there's a huge difference between Corey Trice from Purdue and Keely Ringo, who I think is a very reactionary cornerback, and I just don't know if that's a guy that you should draft in round one. Yeah, I mean, I think there's lots of lots of things that are kind of hyping Ringo up that aren't about who the prospect are, right? It's yeah. you know he's Georgia def- defensive back, highly rated. You know, lots of people talking about training with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, Roger. Uh, uh, I'm <laughs> blanking on his name, but I mean, like, yeah, there's lots of things that you know that are like kind of artificially inflating. It feels like his draft stock, mm-hmm. uh, Richard Sherman. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and and it's. It, it, when you watch the tape, I see a guy that doesn't have the athleticism that I or, or that was promised to me, or at least it's not all over the tape the way it should be. Uh, and it feels like he has to be used in a very specific way. So yeah. I, I think he, for me, I feel less bad about him because I feel like he fits a type that the Cowboys can use. Properly. That part of I, I just, it just feels like such a reach to have to draft well, that guy in round one. That's what it is, right? This is the kind of guy where it feels like the Cowboys should be getting later than everybody else expects because he's not going to be as useful to all the teams right. as he would be to the Cowboys. Not a guy that I would have to spend 26 on sure. or even really 58. I, I I don't love him there even, but uh, I, that's why I think, yeah, it, it, like the, the idea that I would have to use 26 to go to get him is, is it makes it too rich for my blood. Not that I don't like the yep. player. And the other one is Quentin Johnston for me, the wide receiver yep. from TCU. He just, I just don't know what to do with a six foot two, two hundred and eight pound receiver who was told I, I was told this whole time that he's this an elite athlete. Yeah. Runs in the four five five range, drops a lot of contested or drops a lot of passes and had the I think third highest contested ball, you know, rate. Like he just doesn't get open at all. And I just worry, like, do you have to scheme this guy touches? Yeah. And if that's the case. I don't know if I really need to draft that guy in round one. I'd prefer to draft that guy in round three or four and give them three or four touches a game rather than spend such a high pick on him. I mean, again, a guy that I feel like I don't hate, but is being elevated above a pack that yes. I don't feel like he's elevated above, uh, especially since he has kind of, we talked about this sort of mismatching physical traits. Yes. He's this big ball, you know, uh, vertical ball catcher, you know, contest. I mean, he looks, his body and his athleticism matches what you would expect a, a contested catch player to be. That's not his game. No, it's uh, not. He's not a consistent hands catcher either. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I have a problem with him because it feels like his athletic ability mismatches what you see on tape. And yes. on top of that, you mentioned the elite athleticism. I would have loved four, five, five is fine. Uh, you know, with the jumps. I mean, I, I can get past that. Sure. What I can't get past is not so much him not, you know, being fast, but like not even making the threshold for three count. Like, I understand no. that you're not even like you're not practicing it or whatever, but he ran a seven four three yeah. count, which and is then he opted that's out of the shuttle. terrible. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's like, I don't, I don't care if you didn't practice it, but I mean, maybe you shouldn't run it if you didn't practice it. But right. if, if you did practice it and that's what you came up with, and then you're skipping the shuttle, man, I mean, red flags are going yeah. everywhere. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get to some more questions, including a question about some linebackers that the Cowboys have shown interest in next. 
This episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. You've heard us talk about this mobile game before, and if you've ever thought you'd make a good GM, you've got to give this game a try. It's not as easy as you might think to create a dynasty. When you play Ultimate Football GM, you get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team as you play through seasons and lead your team to glory, trying to build a historic dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you are responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, managing all the finances, including negotiating players' salaries, terms. Uh, you're going to have to navigate through free agency, the draft, injuries, player you know, locker room problems that are going to pop up, and all the ups and downs of the season. All of this in a challenging but realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want to, when you want to. Locked On Cowboy listeners will get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. That is Locked On, all in caps. So make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That is ultimate-gm.com, ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, Landon, let's get to some more questions. This one from Gorin. He says, what are your thoughts on the Cowboys bringing in two early round linebackers in Drew Sanders and Trenton Simpson as 30 visits? I don't love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, look, I I, I get that you know, they've got uh, – you know, some players on, on short-term contracts that they, you know, eventually would like to replace, I would assume, um, and Leighton Vander Esch. And, and they, you know, they, they, if you look at a lot of these 30 visits, they, they, this has always been the case of the Cowboys. They project a forward a year or two of, you know, what, whose contracts are coming up. And they sort of try to draft guys mm -hmm. to, to, to get into place so that they have established before uh, the previous players' contract has, has expired. So that's maybe what's happening here with with some of the Leighton Van Der Esch stuff. You're looking for your future linebacker. Some of the guys that they mentioned are obviously super high upside. Guys. I just don't think like, they're round one guys though either. I, to me, they're no. like, hey, if they fall to 58, that's when we we'd like to at least know, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and, but even then, like, I don't love the idea. I, I guess here's the thing. I don't love the idea of taking those guys at 58 if they fall to them. I, I understand that that would be good value because they're probably like you know, they're better. Higher they're be higher than, than that. Consensus more than that. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I also don't love a lot of the choices that we have at fifty-eight. So you know, honestly, a linebacker that's of good value probably makes some sense. So uh, I don't. I just generally don't feel like linebacker is a spot that I would love to take in the top three picks. Uh, but again, unless you love the guy, right? Like, yeah, sure. If you absolutely love him, and you're like, you know what? We can't always count on Leighton Van Der Esch. Damone Clark is coming off a pretty serious neck injury. This is a guy that we have a first-round grade on or a one-two grade on. Let's just pick him, and we'll figure it out this year or next year. Yeah, it's and listen, you get a guy like Drew Sanders, then he can do a little bit more than just be a exactly. normal linebacker too. So I, I definitely understand it. I just, you know, I feel very certain about the Cowboys – I feel better about the Cowboys picking from some of the kind of pre pre – discussed position groups that I feel like would really solidify. You can get a linebacker in this draft later if you need to. That That's my concern about looking at the, the higher, highly ranked guys. You make a linebacker. And I'm like, I'm not actually joking. Like we've seen the Cowboys take some of these safeties that are 215 pounds sure. and turn them into a linebacker. And we know that they've got a couple of guys on their radar in this class. And they have a guy on the team that they signed last year as an undrafted free agent, Marquis Bell, mm -hmm. who I won't be surprised if they, kind of used as a pseudo linebacker this year so no. I, I wonder if that's a strategy but these are just these are two guys that are probably going to be ranked inside the top 50 probably just doing their due diligence if i had you gotta guess. you gotta know about these guys i mean yeah. that, that's fair you know i i, I don't lo like i said don't love the idea of taking a, a linebacker early but i yes. i get it all right next one from at jones's babysitter he wants to know what prospects would you consider trading up for in this class <laughs> well, I I won't uh, I I won't dis disclose uh, some of the uh, results of a, of a very interesting uh, uh, 2023 uh, locked on uh, mock draft. There was definitely a player that uh, please check in when it comes out when it's released. There was definitely a player that I had considered trading up for, 
uh, that unfortunately a, a rival went up and got. But a, uh, I, I think there are a couple players here that that like are worth the 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 price of admission, depending on what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, I think that you know if for some reason you, Jalen Carter fell outside the top ten, I would at least make it inroads into discussing to see what it would take simply because I do think, you know, if, if the, if the NFL draft is anything like the kind of mock draft situation that, that the, that we went through uh, during our, the locked on exercise, there's going to be a lot of teams looking to trade back, yeah. you know? So yeah. I, I think that there is a chance that you could get on the phone with the team that is just desperate to get something out of this pick and yeah. are willing to take, you know, 75 cents on the dollar to, for, to trade back. Uh, and if that's the case, someone like – it would need to be, for me, like someone like Jalen Carter or uh, Jackson I, Smith and Jigba maybe. But you even know? then, like, like, are you going to be trading a then, bunch of a bunch of picks for probably a slot receiver in the NFL? Yeah. I mean, oh. honestly, I, to me, the only name that really makes sense is Jalen Carter. Um, I, I would say, like, you know – you could maybe you could maybe convince me with some of these other guys, but I, I think he's the only one that like that trade value chart would be like worth the fit, just because I do, yes. I think he turns your defensive line into something completely different, um, um, and and it would it, that would be worth the price of admission. It seems like in other years we've had guys that we liked that the Cowboys could potentially trade up for. We talked about Kyle Pitts. What was that? The twenty twenty one draft. Mm-hmm. The Cowboys mm-hmm. ended up doing okay, trading back and getting Micah Parsons. Uh, and you know there was there's obviously other names over the last couple of years. This just doesn't feel like that type of draft for me. No. However, I I wrote down a couple of names. The first one is the guy that you probably have to go up the highest to get would be Paris Johnson, the offensive tackle from Ohio State, just because I've seen him play guard at Ohio State and be awesome at it. So maybe he's one of those guys that you draft, you plug him in at left guard, and then a year from now, two years from now, you can let him be your right tackle. And that's, you know, I know that's, that's a lot to try up for a guard. That's, I but. like that though. I know. I mean, I think it makes. It, again, I, I'm willing to do it for people that like it. Like, it, there's a a a nexus of value and like you know fit for yes. what you're trying to do. That's where it makes a lot of sense. It, I, I would say Christian Gonzalez, but I don't think I just don't see him getting outside the top twelve. He's just too good yeah. of a player, right? Joey yeah. Porter Jr. was another guy that I and was going to mention. And that's the other one. Yes, yeah. that's the other one I wrote down just because I think he is such a good scheme fit with his long arms, his play style. You draft him, and all of a sudden, man, you feel awesome about your three corners. I would say, too, you know, maybe a small trade-up if someone like uh, Skaronsky falls, you know, sure. and you want to get in range because he's another guy that you feel like he could play probably all five spots if you need to at a very high level. And that fits kind of the the you know, like I said that's that 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 nexus of value and fit for what the Cowboys want that I feel like could be worth like I said small trade up I'm not selling the farm for Skaronsky no. but uh, I think that that that, you, that it'd be worth it because you get a really really good player sure uh, I just man Joey Porter like if you could go from 26 to 21 yeah. and yeah. maybe it cost you a third round pick or something like that that's where I'm excited because I think yeah. Joey Porter could be a star on the outside. If you give him, yeah, and and if you give him a year to learn behind Stephon Gilmore, who's on a one-year contract, I just think that's the perfect learning situation for somebody like him. Uh, All right, Lane, let's uh, let's talk about some of our favorite day three players when we get back. This episode is brought to you by Fanduel. The NBA playoffs are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download Fanduel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That is bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on anything and everything from the money line to point scores to three-pointers drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Landon, our last question here from Steven. He wants to know, who are some of your favorite day three guys in this class? 
well, I mean, now it's tough because it feels like so many of my day three guys are being, you know, artificially, not artificially, but pushed up into uh, day two areas. Um, you know, you can give if they happen to slip into third round, it's fine. Yeah. Just like oh, after yeah, the top yeah. 75 picks or so. We're, we're not, I hope, no one's going to hold me to this. Uh, and, and, and I hopefully that no one's going to no. turn around and yell at me if, if one of my, my guys gets picked early. Uh, I, this isn't going to come as a surprise, I don't think, because I've kind of spent uh, a lot of the draft season talking about my love for the uh, the UCLA offense, uh, having watched <laughs> a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, and so I think there are several players from that offense that kind of fall into this. And, and I, I'm going to go with Antonio Maffi because mm, uh, come on. Let's come on. he's a guy that, you know, if the Cowboys are unable to kind of pull off Avila or, or Cyrus Torrance, or, uh, you know, one of the other kind of center guard types that they were looking at earlier. Um, you know, they, they're going to get a look, they're going to get an opportunity a little bit later in the draft to kind of, um, to so kind of hit, hit some, hit on some other guys. If they can't get the Schmitz or even a Tyler Steen, this is mm-hmm. a guy who I feel like if you get into the later rounds, you know, he's a little bit more of a, of a, of a power player. Um, I, but I, he's got the athleticism. He's got incredible athleticism, uh, that he certainly can play more in his own. You see a lot of that in UCLA. He's a guy who I, I think that if you draft it in the, I don't know, I think I've been getting him in the fifth round, if I'm not mistaken, fourth or fifth round. Um, he, he's a guy that I, I don't know that if you, you're going to be able to start him right away necessarily, but I have a feeling that he will work really hard and that his natural talent will kind of put him in the starting lineup, yep. you know, early, yep. if not, if not before the starting the starting game, the first game of the season, then early in the season. So uh, I'm just a big fan of his game. He's an athlete. He's got a nasty temperament. Um, I, I just, and I, I kind of, the more and more I watch him, the more and more I'm kind of surprised he isn't higher on this list. So don't be surprised if he is higher on this list. Yeah, I know. I, some of this has been my problem too. I, I like Darius Rush a lot, like pre-senior yeah. bowl when he was thought of as like a fifth or sixth round pick. Now I see him going in the third round of a lot of mocks. I also like Riley Moss, a corner from yes, Iowa, Iowa who yeah. Might be a safety in the NFL, might be a slot corner, but man, you turn on the tape and he just makes a bunch of plays. And I will also say two offensive guys, Roshan Johnson, a running back from yeah. Texas. We've mentioned him a couple of times, probably not a starting running back, but I think a very good running back in the right committee, maybe like a Jordan Howard type of player. Uh, and then I like Aiden O'Connell a little bit, the quarterback say, from yeah. Purdue. Just he, <laughs> He is not somebody who's going to improvise. He's got to play within the structure of, of the offense. But, man, he's got a quick release, and the ball placement's pretty incredible. If you want just like a backup quarterback that's not going to mess things up when he gets on the field, I kind of think that's Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, he's got you know he's a lot of tools. He's definitely more of a toolsy prospect. But I, I feel like, like some of these other guys, he's kind of flying a little bit under the radar because – He's not that toolsy. I think he's, you know, kind of he's not a athletic. little bit more. That's the problem. He's a stat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. And by toolsy, I mean like in a quarterback way, yeah. right? Like he's like, he could throw the ball really well. He could throw with accuracy. You'd like to see him be less of a statue in the pocket. You'd like to see him, you know, he doesn't have incredible mobility. So he's not going to be the guy to, uh, uh, you know, like take off on third down to pick no, up a third and six not, with his, no. with his legs. But what you'd like to see is, is if so you're going to be kind of statuesque in the pocket, just a little bit more awareness, a little bit better navigation in the side of the pocket. Uh, but, can I mention one more guy? What, yeah, yeah I'll just say really quick about Ann O'Connell. Yeah. It's just, and I know it's probably a number thing, but man, it feels like if you give him good protection, he could be a Jared Goff like quarterback in the NFL, right? Like yeah. where he's going to be accurate and he's going to get rid of the ball quick and you can build an offense around that guy. And if you can get Aiden O'Connell in the fourth or fifth round, Sure, why not? Uh, last one guy I wanted to mention. Uh, I don't really know where his stock is at this point, but I didn't love necessarily his tape. It was fine uh, for the Senior Bowl, but having gone back and watched a little bit more of Notre Dame, Jarrett Patterson is a guy yes. that yes. I, I, you know, like I said, I wasn't super impressed with what I saw in the Senior Bowl. I felt like he was up and down at times, but I do think that he's a guy that, having watched his tape at Notre Dame. He got a lot of experience on a very talented offensive line and, and got coached by a very talented offensive line coach. Um, I feel like he's a guy that you could you could take in the 
again, probably fourth or fifth round, maybe, yes, right? Hopefully. Yep. And, and and stash him and let him sit behind Biotish. And maybe by next year, you've got a guy who's developed a little bit and who uh, can, at, at the very least, be a good stopgap swing interior guy. If not, maybe your starter at center next year. I love it. A bunch of starts in college at a big yeah. program behind one of the best offensive line coaches in the entire nation. It's a great call. I, I will not be surprised if we look back and he started like 67 games in his NFL Absolutely career. Not. Yeah, right. I mean, he just seems like that guy, right, who slips into the NFL because he has a lot of experience. He has a lot of knowledge. You know, he's not flashy necessarily. He's he's not the athlete that Tipman is or, no. uh, you know, the the widen, widen the, the center from Ohio State. But, but play, he's right. yep. he's a white, but that's right. He's solid. He's 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 like a good he's a good player. You know, he struggles in one on ones. But how many times are you asking your center? Most to go centers in a do. One-on-one? Right. Yeah. So uh, I, I think that he got he's a guy who I feel like, uh, unlike some of the other guys we mentioned on the top of the show, got artificially pushed down because of yes. things that aren't exactly going to be uh, a one to one for what he's going to be asked to do on the football. field. Yeah. Gamble on Notre Dame offensive linemen. Usually that works yeah. out for the, uh, the better. <sighs> Uh, That is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On NFL Scouting Show with the Draft Dudes. From free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more, join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for checking out our podcast. Please go to YouTube, Locked on Cowboys over there. Follow Landon on Twitter, at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you guys next time.